Good evening, everybody. It's Saturday night. Welcome back to Saturday night, and welcome back to Romhack Races. I'm so glad to see everybody here. It's week 210, if you can believe it. And tonight, we're live from that space right in the middle of those two fireballs that you walk between at the end of Trials of Death. It is Vertigo, a level by Mars a Ampri. I hope I'm saying that right. Mars Amper. Uh, I should have asked, but Mars. They have got a great level for us tonight. You might know them as the maker of uh, Levels for Trans Liberation, where every clear gets a donation to the Transgender Law Center. And uh, we'll even put the link in chat. Ampere, thank you so much. Uh, Mars Ampere, our maker tonight, with the level Vertigo. Uh, length of longest section tonight, rated by our testers, 3 out of 10. But hardest trick to figure out, brain factor, 5 out of 10. And execution, hardest trick to execute, a 7 out of 10. So get good fast tonight. Um, consistency could count in these tough obstacles, but one shots could be absolutely huge tonight and make the difference for the racers. There are 11 racers signed up, I'm told, and uh, we are ready to go here pretty soon. If you're just joining us, if you're new and you don't know what this is, this is Romhack Races. Every Saturday, we have a never-before-seen Super Mario World Kaizo level that has been made by someone cool in our community and tested, and the racers don't know what they're in for. They're just going to have to sight-read it using all their all their available skills and knowledge and anything they have. So, good luck. Uh, we had testers tonight uh, for this SQL Infection, Mithrillionaire, Darkenine, Kerr, and RB Pimlico. Uh, we have 16? That's awesome. 16 racers tonight. Uh, we got some last-minute signups, and uh, the scouts tonight are going to be working overtime, I guess. Darkenine, Starlord, and Kelgand. Uh, they are watching everybody else's stream and seeing, you know, who's maybe making the lead, who might be getting making some progress or whatever. Um, so we're going to have a race for you, and you get to watch and hang out and get some hype in chat. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm Glitchcat. I will be bringing you the play-by-play uh, -play commentary. And, uh, you know, we got about, well, it's about, about a minute to get started, so you got time to, you know, just relax, get comfy, make sure... Make sure you don't miss anything. Don't blink. Uh, last week, we had uh, Revelug, You Fail Me, and Halcyon as our podium. But, uh, of course, we're here to support all the racers. So if you see you know, a streamer you like, uh, feel free to put their emotes in chat. Cheer on everybody, and uh, we'll all have a good time. We got Halcyon here in the upper left to start us off. Nathan MG in the upper right. Revelug in the lower left, last week's first place. And uh, Jank Pickle in the uh, lower right. Also, of course, big shout-outs to uh, Dr. No on the Restream. Dr. No, star of the recent Stern Pinball Machine. Uh, <laughs> Dr. No, helping us out on the Restream, keeping us all organized behind the scenes. D to the 4th, Sly Cooper Speedrunner S Extraordinaire, helping us out with the website and the leaderboard, exclamation leaderboard in chat if you want to see who got what position. And, uh, and all of you for hanging out and being a part of this tonight. I'm going to turn my speakers up a little bit so I can hear this lovely uh, this lovely elevator music. I feel like we're all, you're all calm, you know, so press the right button and we'll all get off at the right floor and we'll have a fun race tonight. I'm Glitchcat. If I didn't mention that, I'll be bringing you the play-by-play. Uh, -play. And uh, all you have to do is just sit and relax and get comfy, but ask any questions if you want to learn anything, a little, anything about Kaizo or whatever. Spins only. You can use A or B. Tap to retry four sections tonight. The level is Vertigo by Mars Ampere. If you want to learn a little bit more or you get excited, go to romhackraces.com to get this patch for yourself. Try it out. So, right off the bat, no, uh, no intro screen, no nothing. Spins only. Four sections. And yeah, it looks like we've got a precision level tonight. The blue glowing blocks, uh, they'll, they'll kill you. Uh, don't want to touch them. But of course, the, uh, the ground, the sort of pinkish off-white ground is safe. Spins only is a cool choice here um, because it's a by default, it's a lower jump. And yeah, as we're seeing with the bats for Halcyon and Jang Pickle, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, spin jumping will destroy certain enemies. So in, in Super Mario World, uh, you probably already know, but this is for the benefit of those who don't. Look at this Halcyon! Ooh! Figuring that out right away. Nathan MG in the upper right looking for the answers. But in Super Mario World, a spin jump will bounce off of certain enemies without destroying them. Uh, and it will destroy certain enemies automatically. And even though Halcyon figured it out first, there's Jank Pickle in the lower right. So the answer here was to 
uh, walk off of the gray platform. You can't actually do a regular jump, but if you walk off the edge, you won't be spinning. And look at this, Louis Doucet, eyes on the lower left here. Louis Doucet on the third section now, Jank Pickle and Halcyon on the second. And so we're seeing this property of needing to, wow, Louis Doucet on a tear. Could this be, could this be, wow. For the, for the execution heavy uh, rating that we've seen tonight, this is off the chain. Yeah, Louis Doucet in the lead right now in the lower left, but Halcyon, you fail me, Jank Pickle, close behind. The thing to do here is to figure out what sort of jump you need to be doing. What do you want to do in the air? Do you want to be spinning, or do you want to not be spinning? Since you can't regular jump, the only way to not be spinning in the air is to walk off one of these great platforms. A really clever setup. And Halcyon in the upper left with another checkpoint closing in. Uh, that puts uh, Halcyon one section behind Louie right now in the left. You fail me and Jank Pickle still looking for it. Not a lot of tech to explain here, but just really elegant motion right now. This is all in the jump control and just the way the players can move and articulate themselves in the air. A lot of uh, really tight competition. Yo, Quiet Mason in the upper left got that checkpoint and they're tied now with Louie and looks like you fail me. So a three-way tie for the lead right now in under three minutes is really cool for a level like this. We're seeing the uh, the seeing the Rex come up. Rex is an interesting enemy because you may boost a jump off of a Rex. What I mean by boost is when Mario lands on certain enemies, like a Koopa, for example, when you jump on a Goomba, right? You can boost your jump up into the air and get more lift. When you spin jump and destroy an enemy, you sometimes don't get the boost. You just plow right through it like a drill. Here goes Louie. Watch the lower left. Not quite, but that's a door in a checkpoint. That's got to mean good things. Louis in the best position right now. Uh, but I was just going to mention that Rexes are an interesting enemy because you can boost a spin jump off of a Rex. You'll destroy the Rex, but you'll also boost up in the air. It's a weird thing that not many enemies that get killed by a spin jump have. So Louis Doucet kind of checking for the door here. This is a really just fast and furious level right now everybody you see on screen on the uh on the same section oh no we might have lost uh oh no did we lose louis louis might have internet troubles who knows who knows we hope they can get back in this soon quiet mason you fail me halcyon and yeah jank pickle so the, the question here really being you know how do you move and articulate your jumps correctly looks like jank pickle has an idea here the, uh, the Rex is an interesting situation because you don't want to kill the Rex immediately. If you were to do that, you would be landing on the bats, but you would destroy the bat with a spin jump and you can't get up there. So the idea here is how do you set yourself up in a regular jump? And Quiet Mason in the upper left thinks like they've got it. So what we're watching here is for the player to jump over the Rex and then the Rex goes below them. At that point, they can walk off the ledge, right? Now they're not spinning. And then they land on the Rex without spinning. And that doesn't kill the Rex. It just squishes it because Rexes have two hits. Then they can move to the left. And when they come back to the right to set for that jump up, uh, the Rex will respawn and they can make it. Really clever setup here. And it looks like you fail me. Upper right-hand corner. Now, what's it going to be? Oh, I know. Oh, is it this simple? Oh, is it this simple? Hang on. It's not over yet. You fail me for the win. Sub six minutes and a really, really good uh, good clear on that final section. Like I said, one shots. One shots are big. Oh, okay. So, yeah, slight, slight change of plans here. We have we got to consult the, the refs. Louis Doucet with the, with the win while the stream was buffering. Sometimes you run into buffering Twitch, you know, bandwidth issues. Uh, so that's a strong first and second uh, for both you fail me and Louis. Really cool level tonight for just uh, sheer precision. There's no there's no trick to this one, right? It's just, can you move Mario? And Jank Pickle, could this be, yo, know, putting putting all the Lego blocks correctly together in the right order, according to the, the schematics, and grabbing that orb for a solid third place in Revelug and Quiet Mason. Who's gonna get it first? <laughs> oh, it's Quiet Mason. Nice. Wow, I can't believe it. That one death separated uh, separated those two. That uh, very rarely happens. 
when like you get two players right at the orb and one person one person dies and one person doesn't. Good job, good job. Really good. Oh, man, some fast clears tonight. I love it. I am impressed for the difficulty factor tonight. Length of longest section, remember, only 3 out of 10. I think the 5 out of 10 brain is good because you have to figure out how to move and set these up. But, yeah, I'd, I'd say the execution is pretty high tonight, and these racers just made this look easy. Nathan, thank you for the raid. One of the easiest levels to test because it was basically race ready in its first iteration. You'll get that kind of quality, uh, quality difficulty from Mars. If you're liking this level, I highly recommend checking out Levels for Trans Liberation. Now, the hi I do highly recommend it, but keep in mind it is this, but a lot more difficult. And if you think, you know, if you're sitting around thinking, okay, this is easy, I'm ready for a tougher challenge, precision in Mario World can get really intense and cool. I, for one, would love to see more precision type levels um, because it's so. It's such a great challenge of fundamentals, right? It's just moving the character. So often in Kaizo can be overwhelming with uh, lots of tech to learn, a uh, double shell jump, a uh, Yoshi sticky fly, a tongueless Yoshi midair, all this jazz. Um, but this is sort of a level that anybody could try, you know, without even needing to know, you know, Mario tech, as long as you can kind of just move and jump around. So check out levels for trans liberation if you really wanna, really wanna get uh, get tough. You fail me. Thank you for the raid. Thanks everybody for dropping by. Uh, Nathan, also if you're dropping by, thank you for the raid. Everybody, rocking this level out tonight. We've already got so many clears. Leaderboard in chat is the command. Germdove, Stewcat, Halcyon, and Mangort battling it out right now. Everybody on exactly the same section. So. Really solid progress. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to ask if you just want to learn about ROM hack races or Kaizo. This level is fairly self-explanatory, um, but uh, happy to happy to answer whatever you got. I was looking at the uh, 7 out of 10 for this level before we started tonight, and I was thinking this was going to be more of a... I was thinking like, oh, okay, knock down, drag out, fight kind of deal here, but no. This is uh, these racers are getting getting right through. Oh yeah, okay. So yeah, Halcyon going for a little bit of an alternate strat there. Instead of reloading the Rex, they're trying to go from the Rex directly up onto the bat. Here goes. Ooh, Germ Dove trying for it. What's the shortest clear time for a five rated level? That's a good question. Um, I think we've had we've had sub three. I'm trying to think of like shortest clear times overall. Um, we've had sub three clears before. Um, I think we might have had sub two. Yeah, we we have we have, have we had sub two. Oh, Germ Dove! Ah, oh no no no! You can't blame that on commentators' curse, cause uh, that was that was all them. Yeah, Germ Dove. <laughs> Get good. No, I'm just kidding. Germ Dove is very good. Talented player. Get, getting, getting good. Er, it's Mr. Hank Scorpio in the upper right. Uh, Halcyon Mangor Germ Dove. Everybody's looking for the end. But I want to say this might be one of the shortest times per like execution difficulty metric that we've had. It'd be neat someday to go through and just do really hardcore stats on all the ROM hack races data that we have, leaderboards and stuff, to just see, you know, like, what is the shortest clear for a five level? What, you know, what's the most people that have ever finished in under five minutes or something? We have 200 and some, 210 levels at this point. We really could have like a, like a Guinness book of ROM hack race records, you know? Like, we, we really could. We could publish the publish the book <laughs> here goes mangort in the low oh, i'm sorry that's halcyon excuse me lower left it's halcyon at the orb nicely done gg halcyon i i feel like they they sensed a trick there germ dove in the upper left right behind them germ dove yep they got it 
GG Germ Dove. And it's uh, Stu Cat now working on it. Mangor, Mr. Hank Scorpio. Oh, Endless Ascent, too. Oh, man, all our friends are here. Hey, thanks for hanging out uh, for ROM Hack Races. Thanks for making it a little part of your Saturday. We really appreciate doing these. If you'd like to learn a little bit more, you just got here, didn't hear me the first time, romhackraces.com is the website. Uh, we're always looking for volunteers or makers, uh, folks that want to get involved, or just jump on the Discord and talk shop with us. If you just want to learn more about hacking, Mario hacking, uh, you know, uh, Lunar Magic, that kind of thing. If you want to learn about Mr. Hank Scorpio trying to get the orb, geez, nice job. I haven't seen anybody go for the, uh, just to try to spin jump across that pit. That's what I thought the uh, the thought Mars was making us do there at the end. Because I think you could. It looks visually possible. There's a very low... If you touch the, uh, the spin jump button for two frames or less, you'll do a very particularly low spin jump. And sometimes precision levels use that two frame spin. <clears throat> it's a really good tip in general. The, the, the spin jump is cool in Mario World. Because it's more powerful, and by default, it goes lower. You just don't get as much height. Even if you hold down the button the whole way, um, you know, you just don't get the height. So, if you want to do a low jump, be cool like Mangort, get in the door for the orb. Uh, nice job, Mangort. GG. We got What's Up Dot in the upper right, too. What's what's up? Uh, but uh, if you're if you're in a situation... Even if you don't need a spin landing, it might be to your benefit to just do a spin jump anyway, right? If, if you want a lower jump, just for whatever reason, through, there, there are a million reasons why in the course of a Kaizo level, you might want a lower jump. Try a spin and right and get good at sort of shifting your thumb on the controller between X and A and Y and B. And if you do that, you'll find you have a little bit more control in tight situations. And it might save you from bonking your head on the ceiling. It might let you clear a gap faster. Say you're trying to uh, make the most of your iframes or a superstar. Uh, doing lower jumps won't waste as much time in the air. So keep that in mind that even if you don't need to land with a spin, sometimes a spin is really the optimal uh, type of jump to do. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't clear about that. Yeah, jumping in the last room is disabled. Uh, not able to, you can't can't do it. Um, and that is why no one can do the jump over the pit. <laughs> so, you know, it makes perfect sense. Very tight leaderboard tonight for sure. We're here to cheer everybody on, though. Really, 15 minutes on this level is a very good time. You know, you're you're definitely seeing good racers play against other good racers here. Aesthetically, I really like the use of the long uh, blocks instead of multiple squares. Uh, rem remember the old nice aesthetics meme with the, uh, oh, yo, here goes Stu Cat. Ooh, nice try. Uh, remember the, the old nice aesthetics meme with just all your walls are made out of just cement squares? I like it when not everything is like tiles. You know what I mean? When, when, when you're, you want a row of death blocks, but you have an individual one for each of that. I think these long, stretchy, bendy blocks look so much nicer. And Stewcat, nice consistency, pal. That took him like two tries, and they are right back. Go, oh, uh, graciously though, keeping the checkpoint there. I almost feel like we could have gotten away with not having a checkpoint at that room. I almo uh, almost, almost, almost. But you know, keep it keep it kind. I, I, I same Mars. I, I hope these become more popular as well. I think they just do a lot of good for making the visual space look a lot cleaner. You know, it. I always feel like in a level, it really is like the obstacles and and the the stuff you're jumping on. That's like the painting, right? 
And the death blocks and the munchers and the walls and stuff, that's the frame. And the better you can do to kind of differentiate that and keep keep things well framed, I think that helps for just keeping levels clear visually, just letting the players see a better path. It gets a little tricky to look at something sometimes. Like, you, we've all seen those levels with just so many custom blocks, and everything is a grid of custom blocks, and everywhere you get, there's just more of them and more of them. Um, and I really do. I feel like the uh, the stretchy blocks go go a long way toward just kind of making that smoother in general. Are they just rearranged vanilla graphics? That's cool. Huh. Yeah, I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for watching. I don't know. What's up, Endless Ascent? What's up, Dot? Proto Pizza in the lower left and Ender of Games all hanging out. If you're interested in trying one of these out for yourself, you can always sign up on romhackraces.com, our official website. Come back and see us every Saturday at 8. We still got more race to have though. Put some hype in chat for your favorite player. I'm looking at my uh, I'm looking at my sheet here. I wanted to mention we you, you might have seen the shout out at the start of the stream, but I have to mention this because it is an his an historic weekend in kaizo and uh yesterday was a very historic day in kaizo trials of death has finally been completed and i hope you're not just hearing this from me first it should it is that big of a news trials of death uh by chain trump braden is a level that has taken more than four thousand hours in collected in in some and about seven years that braden has been working on it is i'm comfortable in saying is like one of the hardest the hardest super mario Kaizo level that has been done by humans. Uh, we've got like 1F9 this year, we got Hacker's Dream, and now we got Trials of Death in Mario Maker. It is a phenomenal achievement that we may never see the likes of again. There may there may only be one Trials of Death. Uh, now granted, you know, I say that now, but um, Brayden put an absolutely amazing amount of effort into it. Check him out on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash chainchomp Brayden. Um, is just a phenomenal, absolutely Please watch the video if you don't believe me. If you think to yourself, oh yeah, I've seen Hard Mario before. No, no, no. I, I, I say this to you as a self-proclaimed, but I can back it up. Kaizo expert and historian. This is without a doubt um, like the hardest level that we've probably ever seen. And maybe ever will. But I don't think that's the case. I think eventually someone will someone will do something harder. Yeah, in fact, if, uh, if Flips hadn't have beaten uh, 1F9... The only I'm comfortable saying Trials of Death is harder because there's less clears on it. And 1F9 has two clears, Anon and Flips, whereas Trials of Death only has one, and we might only ever see one from from the maker himself. So that's really just worthy of so much celebration. And Braden has been such a kind and dedicated maker for a long time. So big big shoutouts to Braden. That is Kaizo history that we all get to witness right now. And that is true, right? We've seen RTA clear of Hacker's Dream and RTA clear of Trials of Death in 2022. But how are you tonight, chat? What's up? What's on your mind? Are you enjoying the race? Well, how do you like the level? Endless Ascent, we got What's Up Dot, Proto Pizza, and Ender of Games working hard. You think we're ever going to see 
see like an SMW equivalent of Trials of Death. I feel like, you know, for me personally, I'm kind of inspired to make just an extra long Various Dragons level. One that would take two or three or four minutes of IRL gameplay to complete. That is true about Flips, too. Flips has been around forever and has, has played and made some absurd stuff of their own. They're no stranger to the gargantuan, impossible level grind. I just, you know, honestly, I would really like to just give shout-outs to our friends in the, in the Mario Maker community. Right? Mario Maker 1 and Mario Maker 2. You know, here we are playing Super Mario World, but I feel like there's been a, a really great... Maybe there was a little more division between the two back in the day but i really feel like both both sides have really come together and appreciate i think there's there's much more appreciation between both crews now for what can be done in either game and people playing mario maker 2 right now and and one uh well i guess this is brayden but you know the the mario maker community right now is putting out fantastic levels i love to see the the clears and stuff that come up on my feed on twitter and whatnot of people doing, you know, still doing these these ridiculous kind of item abuse uh, Mario levels. Yeah, right, and a lot of people play both. There's much more crossover now between the Mario Maker communities and the Mario World communities. And we've seen uh, people come by and, uh, you know, come over from Mario Maker and then wind up making a really cool um, Mario World hack or something. The, se the seven-year uh, Mario Maker levels have been cool. I'm glad that's still going on. But big, big shout-outs to the, the Mario Maker community. They just definitely love, definitely love for, for Maker over here. You know, I'm, I'm kind of curious, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure there's a million people saying what now, but um, I, I'm kind of curious to see what, uh, what Brayden might make in Mario World, <laughs> if he ever was so inclined to try it. It's just uh, not even, you know, make a Trials of Death. Hey, you just finished one seven-year level grind. Want to start another one? Um, you know, but his level design is so very intricate. And that's something I, I really have always admired, is that in, in one of Brayden's levels, you're never just going in any one direction. You are you go up for a minute, then you fall down. You grab something and go through a door. You bring it back through the area you were in, but this time you use the P-Switch, and so everything's different. Then you go in the pipe and blow up a bomb and do it all again, but it's different. And I, I would like to see more of that stuff, that that kind of level design. It's, it's tough to make, naturally, but uh, it's very satisfying. Here goes Endless Ascent. Look out, upper left. Nice try, though. They were a little slow running off that gray platform, but they have got the knowledge now to make this happen. If you want... That's true. Uh, you know, level design conventions have changed. But, yo, Endless Ascent with that consistency. Wow. Wow. If you, uh... If you're looking for... It is a good design. The old school design. And if you're looking for inspiration as a maker... It wouldn't hurt to go back and dig up some old Mario Maker 1 clear videos or something. I was just watching some of my old levels last night from Maker 1, and uh, it, it's inspiring. You know, you, like, remember things. It's the same reason watching old films is valuable, listening to old music, you know what I mean? Because, like, things get forgotten, and, and conventions change, and... Like, for example, when's the last time you saw a dolphin swarm, right? They kind of fell out of style in Mario World. No one's really making dolphin swarms anymore. But you could, you know? You, in the same way that you could make a black and white movie, or you could make a silent movie. You know, same kind of thing. You know, archaic forms and old styles are worth revisiting from time to time. You know, progress isn't necessarily linear. It loops back on itself and kind of rediscovers itself over and over. I think in general, and this is kind of just my 
I guess sort of armchair assessment of it. But I, I you know, I, I've I've been I've played Maker One. I've, I've been in the community since its inception. Um, I kind of feel like the way it's gone is that like Kaizo levels, because we can add in more ASM. Kaizo levels tend to sort of branch out like laterally into gimmickry. That there's a whole kind of there's all these subgenres now of motor skills, and then you can have like. A, a take on motor skills or thumb shredder and now you have motor skills and thumb shredder or a weird thumb shredder where you're spawning something else or like uh, water levels you know Baba Yaga style water world type of thing and there's all these sort of like ASM and gimmickry driven subgenres of level design and that causes like the tree of level design that is Mario World to grow I think like kind of sideways into a lot of hyper specific areas and Maker seems to be sort of like more of a straight kind of curve, but I know there are tech specializations. There's like the you know the 3D world, the new soup speed run has its own kind of thing. But like because you can't really rely so much on ASM gimmickry to like, okay, Mario has a grapple now, you have a double jump now, or you know, every time you press a button you turn into something else you just like can't do that in maker so people are forced to get like really creative with their machinery and their level design and i think that is it's like interesting the way it's it's like honestly it's like how environment determines evolution right that like like things will evolve to fit their environment and be, we've seen that in, in World and in Maker, that they've both, like, grown to fit the shape of their container and still managed to evolve themselves in that space. And I think that's neat. A testament to the creativity of our community. Yeah, right, the looping around and the... Thing, you know, things that used to be kind of, they were new, and then they got old, and then people got sick of it, and then they went away. And now, since no one's been doing it, and then people come back to it, and it's fresh again. And, you know, it goes around in cycles. Ender of Games, Proto Pizza here on screen. We still have a race. Working on a uh, section behind... Uh, Endless Ascent, oh sorry, Endless Ascent, one section ahead of everyone else right now. What's up, Dot, Proto Pizza, and Ender, uh, one behind. Endless Ascent. Yo, upper left. Ah, spent too long on that spiny. Knowing when to launch up when you're surfing is is a thing. When you're... if you're th That's the thing about spin jumping, too, because with spins, you can surf. So you're hanging out on the spiny, and you're just kind of bouncing there, and you're not holding down the jump button. You're what we would call neutral. You're neutral on the, on the jump. But then when you want to launch in the air, you just hold the jump button as you contact the spiny. But getting that moment right can be really tricky because when you're when you're neutral bouncing, you're just kind of rising up and then going back down, up, down, up, down, up, down, right? And you want to time it correctly so you know exactly which bounce is going to send you up into the air. So you don't want to be too early because then you'll throw yourself up too early. And if you're too late, then you're not going to get the bounce. So you have to... Uh, when someone is spin jumping in their neutral, watch, see how Mario kind of bounces? You get that little clicky star graphic, and Mario goes up, 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 down, up, down, and that little tiny bounce. Really good Kaizo players are able to put an input inside that moment where Mario is not contacting the object. It's a small window. I, I don't know what the frame window is. It's probably large, comparatively speaking. I'd say it's probably double digits, at least. Um, but... It, it's definitely not triple digit window. It's a double digit frame window there, so that's free enough. Um, but really good players can do that every single time. 
if they want to boost, they're surfing, surfing, neutral, 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 and then the one exact moment when they want to boost, they know where to place that input, so they go right up in the air when they want to, and only when they want to. Here goes Endless Ascent, with a shot at the door, let's go, Endless Ascent, and they are in, staring down the orb. No jump, but a little, a little, little bop on the note block. GG, Endless Ascent, sub 32, nicely done. SMW, as opposed to Maker, is arguably rigid in different manners. That is true. It's just sort of where you want, you know, what limitations you pick. You have, you have these limitations, or you have these limitations. We got first name butt coming in here in the upper left. Uh, new racer, welcome to the crew. Thanks for trying it out tonight. First name butt. We got what's up dot, proto pizza, and ender of games. Me and you and everybody. Final four tonight. Please put some trans trans pride shell emotes in chat. I wanted to mention too, you know, if if, if you're inspired by this level design and you're inspired by uh, putting your gaming skills for a good cause, Mars uh, Ampere here has also made a hack called Levels for Trans Liberation. And if you clear, if you provide proof of an RTA, that is, you did it yourself with no save states on a console or, you know, emulator, whatever, no save state clear. Uh, if you provide a, evidence of that, a $25 donation will be made to the Transgender Law Center. Wow, isn't that cool? Trans rights are human rights, of course. And uh, you can play the hack, try it out for yourself. Or even, if you're feeling generous, just uh, donate on that link there. Because you can just try this level out for yourself. Uh, this this level is not part of our our donation incentive, but if you want, you can check out romhackraces.com and uh, see all these all the levels we've played, all 210 of them. Big shout outs to D to the fourth for helping us out with the website, keeping everything situated. Really strong gameplay tonight. We're down to our final four in uh, less than like 40 minutes. And on a level that is uh, 7 out of 10 execution. I'm not exactly sure who our maker next week is. But I did want to remind everybody that uh, we have a really cool Halloween race. Uh, we're going to have uh, Furpy. Burpee McFrosting, a, a phenomenal maker. Uh, you will remember. Nice H, what's up, Dot? With some push-ups, yeah. Love to see it. Yo, the dance, though, yeah. It's always a better platforming game if your character can dance. You really want that. Devs, take note. Allow your character to dance. Uh, you you will have seen Furpee's work at the uh, recent GDQ ROM hack race. Um, the name of that level which I tested over and over again for months, completely escapes me. Uh, the level where uh, I would twist and cyberkinesis, thank you. <laughs> I played that level 40 times at least to test it. Uh, yeah, you might remember Furpy, uh, Furpy's work, cyberkinesis, the level from uh, the GDQ rum hack race where everything is tilting, turning, and resizing. Uh, well, I don't know what it is, we don't know what it is, but Furpy is making our Halloween level this year. So uh, watch out for that. It's probably going to be a mind-blowing time. Oh, hey, all right. Yeah, thank you. Oh, well, there you go. Ge Gemstones. VA will be our maker next week. That is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Show, show me what you got. I'm sure it's going to be really good. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited, so welcome. Sorry, I, 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 didn't, uh, I didn't know that. I try to take notes. I have a little run-of-show page for myself before I start each of these. Well, good luck. I'll be looking forward to it.
If you want a little bit of Rom Hack races in uh, in your spare time, or you'd like to catch up on some levels that you might have missed, uh, races that you didn't see, we now have our most recent season on YouTube. You can check us out on YouTube. It's great. Um, every race VOD is there, and you can watch them all, see all the levels, see who won. Um, it's a, it's really cool, honestly. And for me, it's awesome because it's kind of a little... Uh, me personally, it's a little repository of all my work as a commentator. I uh, really appreciate uh, volunteer staff. Thank you, everybody, for helping put that up. That's really, really kind. Um, and everybody can go and watch all the other VODs. So what's up dot here looking for the solution at the Rex part they are on the final section ender of games in the lower right uh, proto pizza right next to them and first name but one uh, one section behind Anybody, uh, anybody have any funny, uh, anybody have a good Halloween costume idea? Or is that, is that, we not, we not doing that this year? It's October, I'm allowed to talk about it now. Kaizo 3, more like Kaizo Free. Kaizo Free Bowser! Yo, what's up, Dot, with a solid strat? And I really, I would like to highlight this because I want to I wanna normalize this for, for players watching or if you're learning. Freaking pause the game. I know you're in a race. Oh, no. Who knows? Maybe something will happen. You know, whatever. Pause. Take a look at your surroundings. Take a break. Rest your hands. This is all good stuff to do. Um, that, that is a valid strat in races. You know, it's not like cheating or anything to pause and, and look at the screen and you know the the tendency is to want to always go 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 we gotta we gotta keep moving try it fast but sometimes take a break i know it seems kind of tough but really it's easy enough for for us to slow down the pace so, so we can all go take a break in fact it's not much better than nothing at all come on you know the song caro caro bonito break it's a good one if you haven't heard it i recommend it You know, it's funny talking about pausing the game. It's really funny that, uh, it's funny and fitting that Brayden finally uploaded Trials of Death because just the other day I saw they put out some video like, oh yeah, like people were wondering if I have a hand cam while I'm playing Trials of Death and they like have a video of Trials of Death, but then it cuts to them and him and he's like, just like, like getting up and like putting the controller down and taking muffins out of the oven and stuff to like look like he's doing it while he's playing. Super funny that he beats the level right after he posts that video. I don't think that video was fake. With that, I think that's the ultimate joke. I think, I think that was actually a real, like an actually real video instead of just a, just a fake one. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, that's how Brayden actually plays. He literally got the clear of the day after. Yeah, that's super funny. Yeah, that that's I, I, I feel like that's real. 
I feel like that was that's actually how he did it. Because let me tell you. Oh, good job, Ender. Yo, I see that. Yes, Ender with the H. Ender with the H. We got first name, but what's up, Dot Proto Pizza, Ender. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Ender on the last section. What's up, Dot? Also on the last section. So watch the right. Right side for those in the lead. First name, but taking a little breather. That's a good idea. Proto Pizza working hard as well. Um, but, you know, it, I, I really, I believe that Brayden, that video was real because in my own experience, there is precedent for this. In my PB, not to brag too much or anything, it's an easy game. Don't, don't let me brag too much. It's a super easy game. Anyone here could do it. Um, but when I was, uh, years ago, when I was playing for a PB on Berserk on Atari, it's a super simple game and you amass so many extra lives that it doesn't really matter what you do. Um, so uh, during my PB, I successfully made and ate a frozen pizza while I was playing the game. I just, you know, just get up, put the pizza in the oven, up, oh, gotta get up, check the pizza. Um, that game actually ended because I got bored. So I believe that it is possible. One could, and we have food percent, you know, there's precedent. I, I think I think that video is legit until further notice. In other news, Brayden just got a 541 on Dragster. <laughs> Ender and Dot looking at the final section here. First name Butt just gotta get that run, gotta get that run off the platform. They're held up right now. They want to get on that gray platform and jump to the other side and then be standing so they can run. Yeah, why, yeah, exactly. Why does Brayden pause halfway between trials to death? Take them, take the muffins out of the oven. Makes sense. Makes sense to me. I can't think of any other reason why they would pause. Yeah, it looks like Ender of Games definitely has that setup, letting the Rex land and then walking off to bop it. What's up, Dot? Also putting that together. Good stuff. 43 minutes in. This is good work from everybody. I, I, don't, I don't mean that to highlight. I mean that to highlight the determination. 43 minutes is a solid amount of time. This is a tough level. All right, yo, info from Doc. So, week 135 by Chon was a five-star level. Lil Lakitu beat it in 540. Louis Duce beat that five-star level in 625, but then a five-minute break before the next clear. So this maybe would be... This was, what, sub... What was our first clear tonight? Exclamation leaderboard in chat will tell us. Was it sub four? We had a yeah four yeah we had so this was maybe the 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 lowest time to highest execution ratio could be a rom hack races record How's your Saturday? Oh, yo, that was your first race. Endless. Nice. And that is true, too. People are getting good. O over the 210 weeks that we've done this, I have seen a, a 5 out of 10 level go from being very intimidating to not very intimidating and tonight we've seen a, a, a level that was ranked 7 out of 10 for execution get done in less than 5 minutes I think that owed in part to the, the generous checkpoints and the the shorter sections it would certainly be possible to um to, to make a level that would like this that would take a lot longer the thing that helps this level out substantially 
And I think the thing um, that, that helped this level be a sub five minute clear is that um, no death is particularly costly. Because of, yeah, because of the bite-sized sections, there is no death that is in just really costly in terms of time. Um, I was watching, okay, and I'll say this, shout-outs to, I was watching the, uh, the Kaizo Cup earlier. They're doing a Kaizo race series, um, pretty neat. They had, like, randomized levels from Power Beneath, um, and it was a pretty cool section, but to, to think about Kaizo races in that way, any death deep into the level is more costly than a death close to the checkpoint because you you had to get through more stuff to die right it, you know you got all the way to the end and then died so you wasted that time but with these bite-sized sections you don't have that really there isn't an exceptionally costly death and so that helps the clear time be a lot shorter um just you know what i mean just because players aren't investing so much in any given attempt and the thing that you really want in kaizo when you're trying to work on a new part or get a little bit better you just you want tries at it that's why safe state practice helps um not can't do that in a race obviously but you know if you're just playing for yourself safe state practice is a great way to do that um it just get the attempts at it sometimes a part is tough not really because it's very hard to do but because it's situated so far back in the level that you only get one try every couple of minutes and you need to get attempts faster. That's why consistency itself is a good indicator that someone might win a level or win a race or something because they get more tries. Consistency is good for its own sake, but it's what helps you. It's what makes up the difference, you know, and, it, and it's that dynamic in a race between who's going to get through and beat the obstacle first is it the player who got many tries at it and finally broke through or is it the player who had a really good read and got it only on a few tries you could be less consistent if you get the one shot and you don't have to get the one shot if you're more consistent getting tries that is true i think you're right about that endless Checkpoints for a race also act as a bit of an equalizer. Yes, I would agree. And uh, it is certainly cool, you know, for, for makers, prospective makers and people coming up, um, you know, to be thinking about making a level designed to be raced. And there might be certain, um, certain things that one would do in design that they wouldn't do if they were making a level just for their own hack or something. But yeah, having these little bite-sized sections lets you get away with more difficulty because you don't have to do as much at one time. And it also just lets you get away with having more length overall because you get to save your progress more often. Nothing nothing is exceptionally time-consuming as long as you're just, you know, can get through the tricks reasonably quick. What's up, Dot? Yo, what is up, Dot? What is up, Dot? Now, what's up, Dot? This is a player who I know they love their trans comrades. So put your pride emotes in chat and get some GGs. That's a clear. Nicely done. Sub hour on a tough level. It's true. I I I thought I, I thought I would point that out for everybody. Here goes Ender of Games. Nice. Oh, whoa! No, they had it all. They had it all. Jeez, Ender of Games just uh wasn't holding the jump button at the moment they contacted that little naked Koopa, and that's why they didn't get the lift up into the air. And that's what I mean by a boost. You gotta you gotta watch out for those boosts. I don't hear a lot of other people use that terminology, but I think it's really helpful for talking about jumping and moving in Mario. If you're, it, it's a it's a common thing. Like it's not even a Kaizo thing. It's just a regular part of the game. If you're holding the jump button when you hit an enemy, you boost up higher in the air. 
and whether or not you want to boost or no boost or when to boost and how to boost. You could do a half boost if you let go of the button sooner. Uh, you could do like a weird little regrab boost. There's all sorts of little types of uh, you know boosting meta. And yo, Ender of Games, no, oh, back again, but not enough. What's up, Dot? Thank you for the raid. I like that little, oh, that frog with the heart. Oh, is that a, whoa, that is, that's a what's up, Dot emote. That's a great one. That's a, that's a nice little frog. I like that frog. That's true. If it's a ghost level, you do get a boost instead. And screaming skulls will shock your soul and seal your doom tonight. It's Halloween time. It, it's ready. I woke up this morning. And I was checking my email and stuff. And I got on my feed. And then one of the first things I saw was someone was like posting that guy in the black bodysuit with the pumpkin head doing the dance from the old ABC family channel or whatever it's like yep it's october 1st it's time i myself i know i, I, I don't want to be that annoying holiday fanatic but i love halloween i'm a big fan i like it a lot I, it's it's the one holiday that has maintains an amount of purity in this weird world you know you got you got your you got your weirdism surrounding holidays but uh, thank ha Halloween is a good one. First name, but here, Ender of Games, Proto Pizza, our final three. Uh, if you're curious, Ender and Proto Pizza, battling it out here on the last section. First name, but doing good work here, working on uh, working on catching up. Ender of Games. Let's go. Nicely done. And that's a door. And we just got to figure out what we're about to do. Nice. GG. Ending, ending that game. Yo, yeah. Big shout outs. Yo, for, first name but though. You know, it, new new racers, someone trying their best and working hard, and that is honestly that is commendable. Can we can we please get some hype in chat, some genuine? I mean this genuine hype for first name, but also go follow the racers if you want a little bit more Kaizo in your life. There are a ton of great people playing on Twitch and on places like TikTok and Facebook Gaming. Lots of different platforms now have really good Kaizo players. But if you're hanging out on Twitch tonight and you want to see a little bit more Kaizo. Uh, plenty of the racers are on. There's lots of great players, so go make a new friend. You know, drop a follow. Folks, folks race to get their name out there and you know show their skills and show what they've got. It is a very good level for just platform very well. And you know, lots of people ask me all the time, you know, what do you do to get better at Kaizo? What's the first step? What what do I do? Um, and you know, I always talk about fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. How well can you just move the player and, and jump and articulate your jumps and run, gather momentum, maintain, you know, deal with friction and all of that. So a level like this is great because it just breaks that down to the bare essentials. It, 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 honestly, this level is like, it, it's like, it's like wilderness survival, <laughs> you know, it's like wilderness survival of Mario. Like, what do you do? How do you build a, a shack in the woods out of leaves and, you know, build a fire and everything? It's it's some Survivor Man. It's just the, the, the bare, bare bones of the game, but it's a good illustrator of the fact that one can get this freaking good at just moving and jumping. There's a, there's a real amount of, of nuance and control that you can have that is... Pure articulation.
Oh yeah, geez, Proto Pizza. Yeah, jumping, spin jumping right underneath instead of kind of looping around. Yeah, they can kind of angle that spin right onto that spiny. That's just good, good jump articulation. See, that's how good you, you know, that there, there is a, you can be really, really good at jumping and moving. Holy moly, nicely done. Wow, they thrashed that section. They absolutely thrashed that section. That might be one of the quickest I've seen at that final section. And Proto Pizza is out of here. Proto Pizza is now a, a completed pizza done with the level in, in in 57 minutes or less, or it's free. Great race tonight. Hey, yo. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. First name, but still hanging out, working hard here. Um, that's that's to be it's respectable. That is, we're we're here to cheer everybody on. Uh, yo, thanks so much. We're gonna hang out. Yeah, we'll hang out till the hour here. Cheer on uh, first name, but see if they can get a little bit of progress and uh, maybe send you over on a raid. But if you want a little more Kaizo, follow the racers. If you want to see another race, come back here next week. If you want to check out this level or any of our other levels, check out romhackraces.com. We got volunteer sign-up sheets. We got leaderboards. We got all kinds of fun stuff. That is true. All right, everybody, everybody starts somewhere. Everybody. This is hacking tough for a first level for sure. For sure. And thanks all for spending a little bit of your Saturday night with us. So we do these every Saturday at 8. 8 p.m. Eastern. Oh, that's neat. I like that little. Oh, that's a neat little, uh, neat little, uh, shout out command. I didn't know Twitch even had that right now. You can shout out to the racer and then you can just click right in chat and follow. That is handy. Wow. That's great. I have, I haven't even seen that. Yeah, it was just added recently. That's pretty handy. So you don't even have to, yeah, you don't even have to leave. Leave the chat that you're in. You can just follow right there. Although, you know, I, I do apologize. Everyone I follow, I turn off email notifications. I am not an email notification getter. I don't need it. I'm on Twitch enough. I, I don't. I don't. I don't need to. I don't need to get emailed about it. Although, you know, oddly enough, some stream watchers actually really like email notifications and they get them and they're like, oh yeah, thanks for the email notification. I send them out for my stream. I just assume that if anyone doesn't want them, they'll just turn them off. Thank you so much for hanging out tonight. I'd like to give big shout outs again to Dr. No for helping us with the restream of keeping us all organized. Uh, a little bit of little bit of news for you before we hit the road here. Uh, check out SMW Central. Uh, we got some great new hacks are out. Unintended Behavior 3, Shallow Pits 2, uh, Trials of Death, just kidding. Uh, Gamble, I've seen people really enjoying. Uh, and a whole bunch more. KLDC judging is still ongoing. Next contest starts... Ah, sooner than you might think. And, uh, yeah, check us out on YouTube, too, uh, for all the race VODs and everything if you missed this or wanted to catch up again. Oh, uh, man. And, yeah, we'll be here next week. I'll be here next week. And uh, we'll have a whole other whole other ROM hack race level. Going to be a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm, I'm Glitch Cat. Uh, for, for my friends on stream, uh, I will likely see you all tomorrow on over on my stream. You can follow me also. I, 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 I have been known to play a little bit of the Kaizo we are going to send the raid over to first name but so we can cheer them on in their own chat. 
Uh, drop a follow. Go hang out in the Kaizo community on Twitch. Make some new friends. Join us on Discord. And thanks for watching tonight. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Or, yeah, tomorrow. Well, maybe I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you around Twitch, I bet. But uh, maybe I'll see you next week for another level. You matter. Your thoughts matter. Your heart matters. Your feelings matter. You matter to other people in your lives. You matter to me as human beings. You matter to the internet. Summer one long boy furred. And the people that matter to you in your lives would love to hear from you about that. We know black lives matter. LGBTQI plus lives matter. Indigenous lives matter. Disabled lives matter. You too. Thanks for being a part of this. Keep hacking. Keep practicing. And uh, have a good evening, everybody. Peace.